Okay, we're live. <laughs> so we're just testing this, make sure this works. Let me see here. Do you see I think you have to share it from the main page. You can share it to your page and tag it. And tag me? Oh, okay. All right, let's see if this is good. All right, were you with the tag? Awesome, okay, great. All right, let's see. Oh, is this working? One second. All right, we're almost gonna start. Thanks everybody for joining us at the Property Management Mastery live event. We're very excited, very excited. Let's see here. All right. All right, great. We're going to start. All right, guys. Uh, thank you for joining us. My name is Richard Kapak, and this is Vanessa Kapak. And we're very excited for you guys joining us at the Property Management Mastery Facebook Live. So today we have an amazing event. It's seven tips to get your rental property rented in just 30 days. So Vanessa is going to go over some tips. After that, we're going to talk about, um, you know, from the seven tips into Q and A's. Uh, landlords or property managers might have some questions. And lastly, we're gonna give a 25% discount on the next summit that we're gonna have in May 18 and 19. Super excited, and we're gonna just jump right in. So uh, we have one of our first tip is renovations. Um, you know, when you deal with rental properties, you know, being able to rent that property as soon as possible is key uh, because, you know, that affects your cash flow and at the end affects your, you know, your cap rate at the end of the year as well. So, you know, renovations, you know, from setting up a budget for your property renovations to, uh, you know, finding the right contractor, the right vendors, and finally, you know, making that listing live it takes a very detailed very thorough process you know the rental process so also material costs material costs yes exactly. very key element i think so yeah right? that's that's correct so being able to present that property is key in order to attract the most you know qualified and you know um uh how do you call it um Qualified, you know, tenants um, being able to attract the best tenants, you know, for your rental property. The renovations have to be, you know, on point. You know, you have to follow a budget and also being able to manage the project with your contractors is something that, you know, we're going to be discussing in very, you know, in details in our summit. But we just wanted to give you like a brief 
of you know what's required in those renovations mm -hmm. you know depending on the market area that your property is located it's also the budget that you're going to set up obviously if you're in a high-end area you're not going to put materials that you're going to be using in a another property that it's in a more of a low income area so being able to know your tenants being able to know your market area and setting up that budget is key so i agree the budget and setting up the timeline uh, so you can actually uh, finish it on time and you'll be able to market it to, to get those opportunities and those leads come in. Uh, material costs, uh, a little bit more on that. Uh, I think also we want to be conscious of what materials you get, where do you buy it, and you don't want to put super high-end uh, materials. You want to put cost-effective, long-lasting materials and um, you know things that's going to be durable. Uh, because it, there is going to be a lot of wear and tear with time. Go ahead. So, you know, the second tip that we have is setting up your rental price. Uh, I think, you know, being able, like I said before, you don't know when your market area, it's uh, extremely important in setting up your rental price. You don't want to start. I see a lot of the investors making a huge mistake, getting very excited with your, their first rental property. And just with the market being, you know, very active as far as in the rental um, industry right now, setting up uh, very high prices for the rental properties. And I see a lot of these listings just being there, you know, sitting on the market for more than 30 days. And that's one of the, the keys that when we, on, you know, when we take on new clients, we let them know, you know, this is a two bedroom, this is a three bedroom, this is what goes on the market price. Uh, why? Because, you know, uh, having a list and sitting for weeks and months, you know, is something that is in towards uh, your disadvantage. So being able to have that listing moving, you know, as soon as possible within like the first week and being very active and showing it is uh, again, you know, it's, it affects your cash flow. So setting up your rental price, making sure that it's not high, it's not low either. If you set up uh, your rental price, uh, you know, low, then you're going to be attracting, you know, uh, tenants that are not going to be desirable for that market area. So, you know, you have anything else that you want to add into Yeah, the knowing, knowing the market, uh, depending on where you're going to be renting your apartments, knowing that market. And if you don't know it, hopefully a local realtor can help you with that. So, going with Vanessa, what she's saying, uh, I think pricing it at the right price range is going to be really critical if you really want to rent it faster. Uh, that's what you're going to... And you, you can test it. You know, you can put a price, let's say uh, the market is showing, let's say, 1400 And maybe you put 1450 or even 1475 to see how many leads are you getting. Uh, on average, um, you should be getting, you know, 20, 30, 50 leads, even more. If you're reaching those uh, 50 to 100 leads in the first week, that means you're right in the money of the price points and now you have to see now you have to go qualifying them and everything the whole process right so the leads are great but you also want to make sure you get quality tenants and going through that whole process uh, yeah that's what i think is very key yeah so you know the third tip that we have is the marketing process uh, being able to be a savvy investor and being able to know your marketing strategy is very important uh, you know, I see listings that, you know, they sit in the market because pretty much it's a, it's a three bedroom with one bath and no pictures, no videos, no other description, you know, in our property management company, I think, you know, that's our first step for attracting prospective good quality tenants, you know, for them to be able to follow our marketing and our instructions from day one, it can let you know whether that prospective tenant is going to be a good tenant or a tenant that is not going to be a good tenant. Uh, first, you know, the first thing that we do is we take good pictures, professional pictures, and we put them on the market, minimum of that pictures, maximum of 15. If you only put one picture, a lot of people get discouraged. A lot of people are more of the millennium group in which they buy through their eyes. They, if they don't, they don't like what they see. They won't go and call you or text you to see the property. Very, very low percentage. So being able to put, you know, good quality, you know, pictures with that light, you know, with lots of light, not at night at 10 p.m. I see uh, this is another mistake that I see at 10 p.m. at night. It's very dark. There's no good lighting, and the pictures look very dull and very 
you know, dead, very, very dark. So second thing that we do is videos. We put, uh, we, you know, we uh, post videos of every single rental property that we uh, list on the market. And the video, you know, has to try to make sure that it's very short, something that at least give them the idea of, you know, walking through the apartment and they get excited when they see the video. And then the other thing we do is a flyer that gets automated through our marketing tools, you know, in our system in the office. But, you know, it's a very professional flyer and it sets up, you know, different areas in the flyer, like the security deposit, you know, what are the requirements? What are we expecting from them to send us even prior to, you know, showing them the apartment? So uh, showing professionalism, showing, you know, make sure that they, fell in love, you know, like first sight, you know, the first time that they see the property is key of how many prospective tenants you're going to be attracting. So the uh, fourth tip that we have today is the uh, showings, you know, the showing of the property. It's another, um, I think, key element in our listings, you know, being able to qualify, let's say if you have two prospective tenants, how do you make a determination of who is qualified to show that apartment. Obviously, you're not gonna be running around, you know, crazy showing 200 people that apartment because it's just, you know, gonna be wasting your time. You're gonna be wasting their time. Uh, I see a lot of people, even, you know, when we have this thorough process, we still have, get like that one person that shows up and they're like, well, you know, I, I'm coming to see this $1,800 listing, but my budget is $1,000. So, you still even screening through that screening process you're still gonna get a, a couple of people that are gonna be off completely but you know being able to make sure your time is valuable uh to qualify those people before you even show them the apartment it's very important you know we ask them a couple of questions you know we have our you know our assistants in the office in which they go through a questionnaire you know what's your income you know uh when are you when are you ready to move in you know how many apart how many bedrooms are you looking for do you have section a you don't have section a it's going to make a determination of okay you know you're qualified to show you this apartment but you know a lot of people apply for for an apartment and it's just a two bedroom but they're looking for a three bedroom and then they come back to you and say, oh, I'm sorry, just, you know, I was just clicking and applying through everything that I saw and mm -hmm. just, you know, whatever, you know, they just give you an excuse. But, you know, you learn through the process, you learn through the years of making sure that, you know, your time is valuable and making sure that this is like the first step of making sure that you're going to be only meeting those qualified tenants. And I think um, to add to that, um, scheduling. You want to schedule um, the appointments and give a time frame deadline so there's an urgency to be there. I, I don't know how many people might go through this, but you might schedule, let's say, uh, 9 to 10 a.m., a one hour window, which we think is too much uh, because people come late. You know, things happen, they don't show up. So there is a rule for thumb. You know, uh, let's say you have 20 people uh, that signed up that's going to go to your showing. Uh, for the rental, probably 50% go. Uh, and if there's a weather condition, maybe less go. So you also want to make a scheduling, probably shorter window. I would say 30 minutes. Um, and also, if they go uh, a little later, it's not going another half an hour to an hour. So keeping that schedule uh, concise uh, is important and keeping that demand up as well. Correct. So you know once you go through the showing process and obviously you know you are going to get those prospective tenants to love your apartment you're going to get you know applications um when you go through the uh, application process we have another process in our office in which we have a digital application uh if we send them the link right on the uh, sh at the showing um you know, I remember the old good days when we used to have, you know, paper applications and it would be another, you know, uh, I think wasting time. You know, a lot of people will take the application, will never return it, or they were missing a lot of things, you know, where our digital application. Or just make... costs, the, the printing the paper applications, uh, printing the toner, all this cost savings that you get if it's you do it online, right? So if returning everything, it just takes, you know, a little bit much longer. A lot of people, if you go to low income areas, a lot of people don't have access to emails or don't have access to, you know, texting you something. So 
We'll have a lot of people walking in into the office as well. With the digital, we'll make it a little bit more easy. It gets to their phone, you know, or it gets to an email, and or you know, you, they can even print it if it's something that they don't have access to certain technologies as well. But you know, um, you know, qualifying your tenant is the uh, uh, fifth tip. It's another, I think, one of the uh, key and most important items. You know that this is the point that it gets to. Um, that you know and you have to make sure 110% that that tenant that you're going to be picking and choosing is going to be the right tenant for your rental property. Yeah, I agree. I think this is the most uh, critical point. I think the most important factor in a rental apartment because uh, if you get a bad tenant, uh, think about it. Uh, in a month, two months down the road, they're not going to be able to pay the rent because you didn't check if they're, they're able to make enough revenue or did you check the work environment? You know, is, is the work environment real? Uh, we've seen so many stories out there uh, from fake pay stubs. It looks real and it's fake. You have to call the payroll company making sure that it is real, which our office does that. Um, also, we've seen is fake LLCs. Anybody can create an LLC today, right? Go online, maybe in, in less than 30 minutes you have a new company. And, but you want to put these questions in the application, right? Um, you know, how long have you been working for that company? And if they put two to three years and your office admin checks it online in the state of New Jersey and it's only been there for two to three months, there's something wrong, right? You got a red flag right there. So those little details, it's important that you put in the application. So that way you can at least get a preview of their background or what they're saying. And you see, you know, you have to now, you, you're really digging in deep. Uh, investigation and seeing everything is real and checks off. So part of the uh, qualification of the process, uh, the uh, rental process that we have for you know our applicants, we have a background check, we have the credit check, and we also have the employment verification and we have the income verification as well. You know we have every single one of those four steps has you know obviously. Uh, sub items in which we are checking you know every single one of those items like the credit check we're looking into certain things you know when we go into the background check as well you go into the employment verification uh there's a process that we have on our end in which you know a phone call is placed to their employer or you know there's a questionnaire that we send also directly to the supervisor or the manager we don't let them take it and bring it back to us because obviously there's something that they can have a friend you know a family member sign for them so the email has for example if we send it to a prospective employer they have to return it in an email um, a company email it can be you know an individual personal email or it has to be returned with you know um, a letterhead from the company as well uh, same thing with the income verification, you know, it's a questionnaire, you know, how long have they been working there, you know, what's their hourly or, you know, their, you know, their salary, are they looking to seek, you know, for, you know, a long-term relationship with that em employee. So it's, 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 this is the most important part of that dating process that I call it, you know, <laughs> with that tenant, because it's like a dating process. It's, this is the time, this is the, the point that you're gonna know if you're gonna engage in a long-term relationship with them and you know, finalize that application process, so. Um, Hopefully uh, you didn't do that for me, did you? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> but anyways, um, going a little bit more in that, I think it's also, um, you know, when you go to the credit check, um, you know, a lot of people, you might see by a low credit score, you might say, oh no, you have a 500, 550, 600, um, you know, you're gonna steer them away. But believe it or not, a lot of those credit scores that we see are kind of low in that, around that area. And the reason is because um, a lot of people are going through uh, student loans, uh, medical loans, um, just the bills itself, it, it creates your, your credit score to go down. So what we focus on is more on the credit report. You can see what they're paying every month. Are they paying the bills on time? I think that's more important, believe it or not, than the scores. Uh, scores, it's good, but the report will be more detailed because if they're, they're paying everything late, most likely they're going to pay your, your rent late. So that's something that I wanted to add. I think it's also, um, it, it depends on the market area. If you mm -hmm. go to a long income area, we've seen a lot of the applicants don't have credit card. Uh, they don't have a vehicle loan or they don't have anything that, you know, can 
build up their credit. So we tend to see much of a lower mm -hmm. credit, you know, credit scores in low income areas. So you have to really focus on the little items, the small details to see if that prospective tenant is, is a, let's say if I, 600 uh, credit score, but why, you know, it, they don't have a credit card. But if you go to a much higher, you know, market area in, let's say, you know, summit, then, you know, we tend to see the applicants have, you know, credit cards, they have one or two vehicles or they have, you know, multiple open credit lines open and you're more, you know, it's a much, you know, detailed pro uh, report in which we can see a lot more from these applicants than, you know, low income area applicants. So factor, you know, those, those things in, you know, in consideration, because, you know, if you go to, you know, like an area in summit and then you see a 550 credit uh, score, but then you see they're late in the credit cards, they're late, you know, with Verizon or they're late with their utility bills, then, you know, you have issues with that. But if you go to a low income area, it's a 550 credit, the same thing, but, you know, no credit cards, but then you still see that there's no open, you know, uh, collections with Verizon or with the utility company, then it's, it's, it, it's the same thing, but this applicant is better. Just not because, you know, it's a 550 is going to make it less qualified than this applicant, which is disqualified in this sense, because obviously collections is here, but not collections is not here. So, um, you, you know, have to investigate this um, case yeah. by case, really. It's case by case. Mm -hmm. Yes. And area, the area also, it's, it, it depends on the area as well. Mm -hmm. So, you know, tip number six is the uh, lease agreement. Wow, uh, your favorite part, right? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, the lease agreement, I think, is, you know, that, you know, um, moment that you get married with a tenant and then you sign your paperwork and, you know, you know, finalize that agreement, you finalize that relationship in which you know that you're going to go into a one year or a two year relationship with them. So uh, that lease agreement, we have a bulletproof lease agreement in our office. I think it's it's been really great in our end, you know, every time, you know, we, we, I don't think we haven't had any issue in which nothing is not covered in our lease agreement. I think uh, every single item that we think that is going to be beneficial for our clients and for, you know, the tenants themselves as well, I think it's listed in that agreement. Pretty um, much any, anytime we see anything crazy happens, we just keep adding it to the lease, you know. <laughs> I think it's, that's what, all the experience that we got. We've been putting it together for many years, and yeah. it's, you know, we have our main lease, which is, you know, a couple of pages, you know, like, I think, like, eight pages. And then we have our addendum, which is basically a set of rules and regulations and expectations. That's how the way I call it, expectations that we set up for the tenants. So if you have the, the main lease agreement, which is just the legal terminology of every lease agreement in New Jersey, but then the addendum is pretty much what are we expecting from you as a tenant? You know, we're expecting for you to be clean, uh, noise, you know, regulations, you know, pet regulations and things like that. So uh, when we finalize that applicant and our clients, you know, um, approve the applicant, then obviously we move forward with the lease agreement. We send them to the prospective tenant prior for them to sign it. So they have a couple of days to review it. And, you know, once they're ready to sign it, we make sure that a lot of times they, you know, we e-sign it or sometimes they just come live to the office, but we make sure that we let them know, please make sure you, re you read the last, you know, set of rules and regulations because that's what we're expecting from you as our tenants. And I think that has brought up to our office and our portfolio for our clients as well a good ground in which you know our turnaround time in the tenants that we qualify and that we sign agreements with it's i think we have a high rate of of, of, of um turnaround i think it's approximately Retention. like uh, yes 98 percent uh i think you know in the last two years if we evicted maybe one tenant from the tenants that we place it's a lot uh just because of the process that we have put in place However, we do have high turnarounds when we inherit properties and we will inherit tenants from our clients that they buy properties already with tenants in there. Mm -hmm. uh, it's, it it gets, can get pretty ugly sometimes if expectations are not set to those tenants. So that bulletproof lease is key 
uh, you know, at our summit, we're going to be uh, showing you a couple of samples of the items that we had uh, put into our leaves, uh, you know, uh, the rules and regulations and the expectations. And, you know, that leaves us after the lease agreement gets signed, you know, uh, we move forward with the moving process. And believe it or not, a lot of people don't pay too much attention in the moving process, but it's actually uh, also like the final step on my, uh, it's like when you, you know, when it's the same thing as a marriage, you know, everybody moved in into one apartment and now it's the time that, you know, you can disclose to the person, okay, we, are let you know, we already let you know what our expectations are, but there's a little bit more. This is this is this is what we're expecting you now that you're inside the house. It's already in paper, but you know, in our case, in the last year, we have been able to automate it, uh, put more automation in a lot of these, you know, processes. One of the things is that we send the tenants an email with uh, number one videos uh, in which they show them how to um, uh, troubleshoot minor items like changing the battery for a smoke detector or you know yeah, that could be huge like Cost little, savings. little things that you know we have gotten through the years through the years just you know phone calls from tenants something is not working and then you have to send a handyman or you have to send somebody on the on the landlord's end and it's costly because obviously you have to either pay that person an hourly rate or you know a service call fee so being able to teach the tenants how to troubleshoot certain things is 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 key, and I think it lowers our volume of phone calls at the beginning as well. Uh, it sets them up also expectations when they're moving in, changing the utility the bills under their name. You know, being able to uh, call the gas company, call the electric company, and also the final step is. When you move out, and believe it or not, I think you know a lot of people might say, think it, this is crazy. But when you move out, this is what we expecting from you. Why we give them that list when they move in? Because it's already sets up the expectations. Okay, now that I'm I'm already moving, I have to take care of these items because if I don't, then at the end of that letter and expectations, this is what's going to happen to your security deposit. Yeah. And that, the, the checklist has to be very thorough. Uh, it goes room by room, uh, section by section, like bedroom number one, bedroom number two, the ca uh, cabinets, toilet, sink, light fixture, uh, if it has a GFI um, connector, and the conditions. Uh, so having those uh, in place in the report when they move in, it's, it's very important because now you have, like she was saying, you have the list and they sign at the end so and and having that signature you know now when they're moving out what are the, what is responsible for on their side uh, if there was already a situation you probably want to resolve it right there in the, in the beginning because they're gonna you know they're gonna have some wear and tear so when they move out and if there's anything beyond the normal things that you already listed then they're responsible and you can deduct that from the security deposit so that's pretty much it. I think, you know, um, it's it's our seven tips how to rent your property in less than 30 days. Like we said at the beginning, I think it's key to make sure that once you have a vacancy, uh, the sooner the the sooner you rent it, the more the less it affects your cash flow. Um, you know, being able to follow these steps is very important. Being able to know your process, you know, establish your own process. I think everybody has their own process that works for them too, but you can tweak it and add it based on what you learn from other people. And that's what we have done as well as property managers. I think we have learned from other, either uh, landlords or others in the same industry as ours, you know, in property management. Uh, I you're think always learning in this field. Always. It's ongoing. I think in, in, in general, in just real estate, you're always learning something, right? Yes, yes. So. So, uh, you know, I think Richard will be posting the uh, link for our promo code very soon in the next hour or so. And we're hoping that you guys can join us in our upcoming summit. Uh, we're going to have a lot of great speakers that they're going to go into the needy and greedy of every single one of these details. Just like another, you know, a lot of other, you know, great topics that we're going to have in our summit. Uh, we have great people uh, locally and also nationally, and I think we have one international speaker as well, and we're very excited about that. 
So we're really yeah, looking the, forward for everybody the, to join us. And the audience really is going to be landlords and property managers. Uh, so really a big focus is going to be on the operation side. Uh, I think that's the, the core uh, importance in really sustaining that cash flow ongoing and able to scale it with the right team members, with the right technologies, the right systems, uh, the right processes. But uh, as a bonus, we're adding uh, amazing speakers to the panel and they're gonna talk on the landlord side, they're gonna actually show uh, ways that, how can you actually get more rental opportunities? How do you market, attract those opportunities? Uh, how do you fund those opportunities? Uh, when you wanna scale, let's say you're in the two to threes, two or fours, how do you go to the 20, 50, 100 plus units? So we're gonna have amazing speakers on that. And on the property manager side, um, as a property manager, you want to know also how do you scale? You know, how, how do you get the next lead? Uh, uh, new clients, uh, are you getting t uh, two doors a month or are you getting 50 or more doors a month? Uh, so, and how do you market? So one of the international speakers actually is uh, from Australia. So that's really exciting. They focus on sales uh, and they're very high level over there. So I like, we have amazing speakers from from Chicago to Hawaii to Florida, it's amazing. We're very excited. So um, the the code's gonna be posted later in about an hour or two, uh, and we wanted to open it up for some Q and A. If anybody has some questions, let's see. Okay, we have one question here. Let's go down a little bit. All right, here we go. Okay, okay. Well, if anybody posts some questions, we can answer it in the in the chat or we can go over it right now. But um, again, uh, thank you again for joining us in our session and we look forward to seeing you in the upcoming summit. Take care, guys. Thank you.